ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪಿಡಿಯಾ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಓಕೆ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ನೌ ಯು ನೋ ಐ ಗಾಟ್ ಅಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಇಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಯು ಟೂ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ವರ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ವರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರಿಂಗ್ ವೆರೀಸ್ ಅಪರ್ಚುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಬ್ರಾಡ್ and uh, you got selected that time in pennsylvania state university and other universities also and you thought of joining pennsylvania state university for phd program in physics uh, mm-hmm. now it is almost one and half year you are in this particular program jyoti and uh, i thought of uh, interacting with you once again so that we provide lot of information to the students who are interested to join such courses so jyoti you are from physics background and i would uh, interact with you and uh, know many things about this entire prestigious program and what are the opportunities for indian students especially in the field of science and mathematics so i start with you uh, please uh, tell all the viewers here about your academic background uh, what you have done uh, which uh, degrees you have done which courses you have done back home in india and then we'll proceed forward jyoti okay Hello everyone, I have done my physics honors from Delhi University. And then I have done a uh, master's in physics, applied physics from IIT, ISM, Dhanbad. Then I have, uh, like, then I joined Penn State for PhD in engineering science and mechanics program. So right now I'm a second year PhD student in Penn State. So yeah. Okay. Okay. So Jyoti, you, you mentioned that you have joined a particular department in Penn University. What is that department? So uh, the department is Engineering Science and Mechanics Department. So yeah, my main work is in optical resonators, mainly in optics, but uh, my department is not physics. So being from physics, I decided to go with for the engineering one. Uh, because for PhD, you can choose any department. okay but uh, in india we know that if you are a student of physics and you are doing phd in physics then you join department of physics like in iits and all but uh, mm-hmm. what is the what is there in a penn state university or those universities abroad you can join any department and do work uh, jyoti uh, and your professor is from which background i mean if you talk about uh, you must be working with one professor i don't know whether one or two but he is he from a physics background uh so uh yeah so for all the universities in abroad they are very flexible as to like where you want to do research i've seen like many people even from the art department they go and do a phd in computer science so it doesn't matter it's all mm-hmm. about interdisciplinary research and i think even india is moving like that because yeah. earlier when i used to work for uh, like that student then i have seen people joining from physics to material science in quantum department even if they have no background so i think interdisciplinary research is the next big thing and all the universities are focusing on that and yes my professor was an engineer and then he shifted to physics like he worked in industry for few years and then he is working in uh, physics basically optics so when when we uh, talk about flexibility available in those universities abroad jyoti what do we actually mean what kind of flexibility students get in uh, us universities i think um like i have experience so far in two year in us as like um, uh you get like if you're really interested in something then it doesn't matter like you're from which background if you have the right knowledge you just go there and do it most of the people in my department have no knowledge about like what they are currently working on so and also phd is something like you figure it out yourself so like if you're passionate enough and if i go and talk to even now like my department is engineering science and mechanics but i work with chemistry professor material science professor if i want to need some help from computer science people then they are also there so it's all about collaboration there is nothing like this is your professor you have to work with them no if you are interested in anything and any person can help you you can just go there talk to them it's very normal and then they will yeah yeah why not collaborate something like that so mm-hmm. that is really a good thing about it and also for the course work like um, So you can choose course from any department which is very mm-hmm. new to me there is no fixed course work as such you can 
just like choose some material like if you want to learn computer science choose some computer science if you know you just have credit you have to fulfill certain amount of credit certain mm-hmm. fixed credit you have to do from your department like very mm-hmm. basic but mm-hmm. rest you, the coursework you can choose from any department it mm-hmm. doesn't matter okay so jyoti when uh, you know uh, when we talk about phd back home if i talk about india you know when we say i mean phd i mean iit doing phd and all certain things pop up certain things comes to my mind number one lot of pressure number two a uh, lot of you know uh, grilling section from uh, uh, from the professor i mean professor really putting lot of expectations from you students sometime you know they are in hurry to complete phd and uh, they are worried uh, like when i'll complete it and what will the opportunities post phd this perception that phd is a really difficult course and a professor can you know uh, make your life hell also if you don't do properly <laughs> and you are under a lot of pressure and you will get less scholarship these are i'm telling you honestly because i keep on interacting with so many students and what stops a student from exploring this option obviously you have to explore it if you are interested in this but what stops even interested people from exploring these options are these factors like professor professors uh, your you know pressure from the professor pressure from your your side academic requirements and phd duration and scholarship these are some factors jyoti i would like to ask you what is the situation in those universities so as far as scholarship is concerned i think you get like lot of money i know people have like i have never met a phd student complaining about there is lack of money even if they are starting a family kids and in us everything is taken care of with just single phd money so i don't think so that is a problem but yes time is a problem if you are going on and finding something new of course that can take mm-hmm. as much time uh, as you want and it can be done quickly also but good thing about head is like nobody is going to pressurize you to do something but at the same time everybody is so good that you end up uh, doing good work yourself mm-hmm. yeah so, so work life balance you know there is a term called work life balance jyoti yeah, yeah i think there is a work life balance pretty much like it's very like it's not definitely not like india like um, so you're not accountable to professors it's mostly phd years are very much uh, industry oriented so government is not giving you fund of course government do sponsor certain programs but the government is also kind of privatized so it's kind of industry work like i know a person uh, like just next to my lab he works for meta like so they are answerable to the company so professor also doesn't interfere he'll just be a stepping stone between you and the company and rest mm-hmm. you have to deliver them the results so it's very independent kind of a thing your supervisor will of course want you to do good work or in public paper but at the same time you are not responsible to him you're responsible to your sponsors and the project deadlines are important you have to stick to it otherwise micromanaging um it's very rare but again it depends from person to person like certain uh, pi would like you to do micromanaging but uh, most of the pi are like not even here so you it's like entirely dependent on you like how you go about the project so when you think yeah. pi does that mean a uh, primary investigator yeah so he so he's the, like your professor or he's industry people uh, he's my prof- like that will be a supervisor Okay. Okay, so, okay. Uh, Jyoti, you mentioned that uh, people are working of on industrial projects. You also gave example of Meta. So, how many students get these kind of projects? Or uh, out of hundred uh, PhDs, how many uh, PhDs may be getting these industrial projects? I think eighty-five percent. Almost everybody so, is getting. Uh, huh? Yeah, because um, like uh, for example, in India, it happens that like. certain lab will sponsor you government will sponsor you you have to clear csir net exam then government will give you money it's not mm-hmm. like that here people are work like for example penn state is very good in material science department i mm-hmm. also like for 6 months was working in material science like it's 
it has the intel research center you know it made the gorilla glass now they are working in something else they are making mm-hmm. a new type of glass so if most of the labs are sponsored by companies mm-hmm. and even mm-hmm. the government is sponsored by like the private mm-hmm. sector so mm-hmm. even if it is sponsored by government then also indirectly you're working for private mm-hmm. sector i would say so that mm-hmm. will make your project very much so um, Mm-hmm. industry oriented so there is no um, like post phd mm-hmm. at least in us people consider phd to like phd better than masters mm-hmm. so that is a perception at least in us i'm not very sure about india but <laughs> yeah in us they do respect phd people mm-hmm. and uh, like you will get like lot of money also like after finishing and if you want to continue in industry academia Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so do you think now you were saying that we work students work on the projects industrial sponsored projects i i, I want to ask you uh, related to scholarships <laughs> so what is the typical you know flow of uh, what is the typical uh, scholarship students uh, get in phd and uh, uh, when we, when you do industrial projects uh, does that amount come from industries or uh, if some students is doing really good work on the projects can that scholarship be enhanced is it like a project you are handling or how it goes i mean what is the scholarship kind of things uh, so basically like at least all the universities go about two program one is a teaching assistant one is a research assistant usually mm-hmm. so teaching assistant are paid like slightly less or maybe it's just for my university i don't know but usually research assistant are paid like little bit higher and mm-hmm. both of them are like quite comfortable job people like all of them have like lot of savings also so there is nothing to be worried about that the money is less both of them get good money um how the industry provide the money you or your professor have to write a grant mm-hmm. if you want to work for example mm-hmm. we work in quantum optics and if intel is working or ibm is working so we'll mm-hmm. write a grant if it get mm-hmm. accepted the entire phd of the student is sponsored mm-hmm. by that grant so mm-hmm. that is how you get the scholarship mm-hmm. uh, yeah mm-hmm. so in in india when you join phd you just identify research work for you maybe the field in which professor is working and then you start working on that so the mm-hmm. touch with industry or the industrial project is minimal that is very very less just you are working mm-hmm. on a problem and then you identify that and after phd mm-hmm. you start looking searching for opportunities in the industries how does it go uh, jyoti the moment you join phd in penn uh, state university suppose you joined it now how mm-hmm. does it flow i mean you will talk to your professor and then you will think of industrial project or you will start writing proposal for industry how does it go i think the professor will tell you like of course you cannot work on something on which your professor doesn't have expertise otherwise how can he or she guide you yes so mm-hmm. uh, the project is always aligned to the professor's research or the lab research see but i'm saying the professors are also indirectly working for the major projects problems mm-hmm. or industrial projects mm-hmm. so that is a difference here i would say also you you are very much welcome to do internship people do mm. intensive internship for example mm. my roommate is a fifth year mm. phd student she has worked with mm. google at other mm. places also mm. like three four industries she has done like mm. uh, internship during her phd so mm. i think that uh, uh mm. yeah okay so now one another comparative analysis i will do is uh when we compare indian top universities like iits professors do consultancy work for uh, industries but what i found is like majority of the professors are doing consultancy work for government organizations like dst mm-hmm. or you know isro or these kind of organizations private organization i found little less uh, i've been part of this entire system for more than 10 years so i realized that less pro- projects are being done from industries that to private in- industries what is the situation in us when professors are handling the projects uh, typically how many projects pro- professor handles and uh, uh, you know these projects are sponsored by government or they are private uh, projects also uh, so that will depend on the professor how many projects he or she wants to handle 
but like it like certain labs are purely industrial whereas certain mm-hmm. labs are very much academic also so it doesn't matter but the point is like i would like to say there is very much of a economic difference between india and usa for example mm-hmm. in india privatization is still not that much common but mm-hmm. when it comes to us even the army or the other things are also very much privatized so there is mm-hmm. no concept of i think your government here uh, mm-hmm. they were, they are very much privatized uh, mm-hmm. with lateral nt or anybody the professor mm-hmm. pretty much work on their research interest if it is if it aligns with industry very good if it aligns with government they are very much happy to do that but my point is even government is sponsored by industry so that will indirectly mm-hmm. like comes to uh, mm-hmm. like i used to work for a lab of that we used to work for government but then the government was also doing collaboration with some private like loki patel or some other company so mm-hmm. yeah okay so now now coming uh, coming to uh, jyoti your university pennsylvan uh, state mm-hmm. university penn state university and that is very reputed university uh, i i request you to tell uh, something about your university to students uh, in india oh i think penn state is very good school especially for material science of my department it's ranked like material science as a society was developed here like as a branch was originated here and also it's very famous for sports Mm-hmm. uh yeah but uh, i think research is when say research is very good like if you want to work on something all the resources are here you don't even have to think about it we have nano fabrication lab we have the one of the best professors you want to work is lot of collaboration lot of money so i don't think so that is like if you were really interested in research i think it's a very good school to apply And, and and you know we have discussed about the academic part, research projects and all. But then in the life of a student, there is a non-academic part also. Like uh, you mentioned about sports and maybe cultural activities and all. Please tell us about the life in campus, uh, non-academic life in the campus. Yeah. So I like you can do whatever like whatever activities you want to get involved in UNESCO or like if you're interested in sports. like you'll get coaches or whatever you want to do whenever or any dance club if you want to form your own club then also you'll get a lot of funding from the um dpsc which is graduate professional student association i myself is member of indian graduate student association we host hosted like a lot of concerts like calling um singers or everyone so i think mm-hmm. life is pretty much balanced you can explore your uh, other part also alongside with academic uh, you can do whatever you really are interested in there is no limit to the resources and um, yeah that i would like okay and jyoti if i ask you about that typical lifestyle of phd student like what they do on weekends and uh, weekdays how i mean what kind of uh, schedules they have so uh, life of phd student in uh, penn state i think again it is very subjective but uh, i would say like uh, of course there are certain time in a phd student life when the research becomes so most important or the only thing when you want to get the results or something but i think other than that it is pretty much where you must well balance or work life balance is there but mm-hmm. yeah it's very competitive you have to like work really hard and then show the results but uh, there will be a lot of people to help you like there is no lack of any kind of resources like i think that is a good thing and of course uh, you have to find a balance between the work and uh, other activities so i think mm-hmm. it's pretty much it. okay and and jyoti now uh, coming to again the probability of getting selection in such universities uh there are so many students you know back home who will be listening to you and uh, they aspire to be in these kind of places especially when you get everything when you get uh, very good opportunities you get a scholarship and everything you get it and very good career also and you know the best part is like uh, in indian system also when when i was a part of iit system i realized that uh, 
you were saying that I don't know whether a masters are valued more or PhDs are valued more in India. I tell you the perception is like uh, if you get job in B tech, then get into a job. Mm -hmm. Why to do M tech? And if you get a job in M tech, do the job. Why to do PhD? And if you're in PhD, the first question pops up is you could not get job in B tech or M tech. That is a perception actually. If I tell you summarize. But now the point is it is changing. Now it is changing. People are going for specialized things. Industries are preferring specialized people. Uh, I hope and I believe that in future uh, things improve. But in India, even now, uh, because of lack of resources, you mentioned this term many, uh, very frequently, like we have sufficient resources and all. That simply means getting research facilities, getting funding, even for conference you want to go outside, getting the money for that. Those things still are restricted in India. Plus, scholarship still is 30, 35 to 45k per month. In that scholarship, you cannot have, you know, feed your family. Uh, there are so many people, no, after 30, they want to go for PhD with families mm -hmm. and all. So that yeah, part yeah. is missing in India. So I keep on doing comparative analysis. So I find mm -hmm. that these things still are lacking. And I believe and I hope things improve very soon. Mm -hmm. As far as the professors are concerned and other capabilities are concerned that you will find here also, that you will find in India also, those things are there. But yes, these are some of, some of the lacunas. Now, after this comparative analysis, the first choice of the students is to do a PhD in foreign universities. That is there because, you know, they want to become financially independent. And, you know, yeah, yeah. in India, there are students who are to send back money to their home also. We know the situation. So, mm -hmm. Uh, that is their first choice. Now, the first question pops up their mind is Penn State University, you said is a wonderful university and everything is there. After listening to people like you, the second question, pragmatic question comes to their mind is, can I get it? I mean, uh, is it possible for me to get it? So I would uh, shoot this question to you from on, on <laughs> behalf of students that Jyoti, what are the credentials and how somebody will do his assessment, whether he can land up in such kind of universities? Uh, so I think it is very much possible, but uh, of course, like uh, to apply for PhD, you need to show some kind of academic background. For I, I will always say the publication has, at least in my case, it did. Like it doesn't matter what journal it is, but like if you have a publication, that will make a lot of difference. Mm. If not, then go and do internships work with professor, have good letter of recommendation. They genuinely read each and every word. I remember my professor asked, what, what do you mean by this word written in your letter of recommendation? Even mm -hmm. after one year, they remember. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think like we don't take it seriously, but they take these, it serious. Uh, people mm -hmm. like the word of mouth is very much important, especially in academy. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, if there is always the chance, like if you've not done it from a good undergrad, try to do it good masters. If you've not done good masters, then maybe try to do some project. Um, internship, try to contact with professors, always write emails to them. They will always are happy to reply. So mm -hmm. I think you should do multiple projects or at least a strong recommendation which you can show in your uh, paper so that is about it and mm -hmm. I know the college matter but uh, I've seen people from different universities also who have done like good research work just because of their research work they are here so it's not like only IIT and are getting selected so mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. not a concept here mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. would say and um, I think it is changing. Like I had a like since I was a member of this IGSA, so I met Secretary of State and Indian um like Minister to India from US. They were working on there's a professor called Aklesh Lattake, he's member of uh, like policy making in US for Indian education system. So we were part of it. And it, they were at such senior position, but they were like listening to us. So their major concern was like, why only IITs are coming? We want to take like people from different universities. So mm -hmm. I think even USA people are also recognizing that only two, three colleges are coming mm -hmm. to US. So they are also like trying to do it. For example, they are planning to do more 
a collaboration with some other universities which are maybe not that famous like iit and iit bridge or something but uh, i think it's they are they are recognizing it so if you have a good profile then don't feel hesitant to apply i would think yeah. Mm, wonderful so jyoti now now i uh, you know you uh, before just before coming to penn state for phd you uh, devoted some time i remember uh, during post grad counseling sessions and you mentored student you guide you were guiding students and almost all the students you were helping they got admission in top courses in iits and they were physics math students uh, now last year what we have done is last year we on europedia mentors they have started you know mentoring students collectively for india and abroad so we thought that why not more opportunities on table and it so happened that 40 uh, 40 50 students joined for this you know, I, i must say this uh, combined modules and uh, they explored opportunities in india and they explored opportunities abroad also so uh, mm -hmm. abroad has a different requirements and uh, it may take some time also to you know get admission and to go and join the course in the meantime these students were learning in indian universities in the labs and all and when the time came they joined foreign universities also at the same time another feature was like you know students who were uh, their graduates they were aspiring and applying collectively for masters program and phd programs now direct phd after graduation is something which provides lot of benefits in terms of monetary benefits also and as we discussed just now that a phd has more value and more career opportunities and that may be one of the reasons that these students applied abroad also now i want to ask you is like what is your perception on this particular thing that student explore opportunities in the summers collectively for indian universities and foreign universities uh, foreign universities maybe their dream jobs it is like you know when you go for placement you have opportunity from placement office that you get a job and after you have got a job you can sit for one dream job also so you have one job and one your dream job in your hand so can this be done i mean indian university also okay i got iit delhi but at the same time i got penn state also now it is up to me whether i want to join this in the meantime i did not go to penn state i am continuing with iit delhi what is your perception on this entire thing I think yeah, it is always good to apply to both the colleges, but at the same time, I don't want to demean Indian University. I think like the non-human research is going on there. IIS in Bangalore, I don't think so. Even Penn State, like for professor, they respect it. So if you get like uh, for PhD, it's very different. You need to focus on the professor and the research and where you can get the resources. I get it. The resources are much better in US University. But if your professor is very much famous and you get a like you are applying in Indian university and you get a good universe like good, ah uh, professor, then I will say like why not? I think you should apply to both the university, and whatever is beneficial to you, you should choose that. Hmm. Okay. And uh, Jyoti, now coming to ah uh, this uh, duration part. I mean that is a criticism for Indian university also, and maybe sometime US also you mentioned. so what is the typical duration of phd for those who have done their masters already and joined phd and for those who have done their graduation only and now coming for phd uh so in us it doesn't matter if you have done masters or okay. only undergrad because you have to do the university course work okay so after that i think most of the student don't know that you can you have an option of graduating with a master mm -hmm. so after two year you can finish the course work and then graduate with the masters also so uh, no matter if you have done undergrad or master you have to finish this uh, credit minimum credit requirement by the university although it is different for master students and uh, undergrad students but i think it doesn't uh, impact your number of years uh, mm -hmm. of graduating and i think typical graduation time would be between 4 to 5 years Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so four to five years will be taken, right? Mm -hmm. And what are the yeah. typical opportunities after PhD, Jyoti, in the form of jobs and all? Uh, so yeah, you can always work in academy if you want, but a uh, mm -hmm. lot of people do join <clears throat> it like industry, like because there is like lot of money, especially in US in industry. Mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. if you have a phd you get green card easily and there are like lot of other benefits so 
people do prefer to work in industry i would say as a lot of people for example in my lab like one person get into samsung other one get into intel so these were the three people who graduated and one of them decided to do postdoc from stanford so like it's there like two of them chose like industry because the thing with industry in us is they have mostly focus on research and development so although they are working in industry but they're still writing papers they're still doing research so for them it's not a change of their work or it's like mm-hmm. it's not like their work is drastically changed mm-hmm. they're working mm-hmm. for industry but in the research mm-hmm. so it doesn't uh, like make a huge difference but yeah that comes from person to person whether you want to continue in academy or join in that mm-hmm. okay so jyoti now you uh, uh you spent one and a half year in phd look like you're quite satisfied with your performance and all i would like to ask you is like if you go back how you would have taken the different route in your academics academic life i mean go back to a graduation or maybe 11 12th class and how you would have taken differently so that uh, you know path you travel how you would have done it differently yeah uh i mean i think there will always be a regret that i could have done that or not but uh, one thing i think i really regret is like not joining it directly after my masters because i had an option to do it but instead i prepared for government exams and like upsc and then i eventually said <laughs> so um, maybe there is a always a regret oh i wasted two and a half years i could have like finished by now so that is something i regret i think except that i don't regret mm. it you know this uh, in india it's a like role model what what we what is visible so government jobs and all there is a lot of craze in india and uh, i normally tell my students and that is my personal mission in my life is this also like as a teacher i would like to tell students that okay devote one year two years for this exam preparation but don't devote five years seven years because i mentor students you know for these jobs and also i find that there are students jyoti who are spending 5 6 years sitting idle at home preparing for upsc and these jobs because world mein there are so many opportunities out there right 5 6 years is a big you know chunk in your entire life so you cannot devote like that so yes that yeah, particular yeah. point is there <laughs> one or two is okay but not more than that yeah i think <laughs> and during my time there was covid also so it automatically got extended you are just supposed to so there was no other option but to sit and prepare right okay okay jyoti so uh, see uh, now now i would like to uh, ask you about uh, research areas for students of physics now sitting here uh, students uh, do not have much awareness like what areas they should work you you mentioned a quantum computing when you were answering something so uh, please tell us what are the probable opportunities for students of science maybe physics or mathematics you can tell so uh, the good thing about physics is i know in india it's not respected but for some reason in us people consider it so much better than engineering <laughs> it's like <laughs> automatic if you will say uh, you're from physics they'll be like oh you must be intelligent that is super intelligent huh? <laughs> i'm put in the category of uh, einstein and all uh. yeah, yeah. so the main reason will be because if you're from physics then it's very much of a opportunity then you can work in anything i would say like i know people who are working in theoretical so they are working in computational i am from optics so i'm working in quantum optics part of it so that would be like eventually applicable in quantum computing but like if somebody is very much interested in coding and he's from physics then he can work on the computational part of it so that is also an optimal option uh, most of the people at least in penn state or the people i know are working in material science because it's i think world ranking to in material science so they work in fabrication of chips for example the main new topic is developing two dimensional materials to replace silicon eventually so they work in graphene and other things so in that there is characterization making new materials finding new materials so that is the main focus for most of the people from physics also then 
astrophysics i like i think you can work in anything if you want like electrical yes. engineering or whatever i think mm-hmm. if you're from physics so that will open up your uh, mm-hmm. field in everything like because you have technically studied everything but not in depth but yeah that helps you in choosing the field mm-hmm. that you want to work Yeah. So, Jyoti, you were mentioning again and again that material science department in which you are also working, that is the best in Penn State. And uh, uh, material science is something which is interdisciplinary also. I would like to ask yeah. you, is like this uh, department, material science is only for particular branch of uh, students, uh, engineering background or for everyone, electronics, electrical, mechanical, everyone? I think it is for everyone. <laughs> okay. It's uh, more chemistry people are there can people from chem like our people from chemistry computational like people i know somebody from iit rogi and done btech in computer science he is working in phd mm-hmm. in computational thermodynamics so you can work in anything you want so i think it is a very interdisciplinary branch also so if mm-hmm. we need to work in materials so people come from all the mm-hmm. backgrounds wonderful so so jyoti that brings us to an end of this wonderful session and uh, whatever i wanted to discuss with you jyoti uh, i discussed and you provided in depth answers i'm really thankful to you for that now anything you want to tell the students who are listening to you any message from your side i think uh, the only message will be like you should like never think like you won't be getting selected the first thing will be i think you should apply no matter if you think the college is very high for example i had a student who had like very low gate score and she get selected in 12 iits i think same like happened with me i also I never thought i will get accepted but i only applied to four school i got some three of them so you mm-hmm. never know like when are you getting selected but the one thing will be like never stop yes. doing it like yes. yeah Mm-hmm. that is very very important message jyoti because uh, students sometimes you no know, put self imposed restrictions on them that okay my gate score is low or i don't have gra or i don't have credential i don't have research paper i do not have publication i may not get it so that thing is basically not good you just uh, you know you should try you should take the first initiative and if you have belief in your mind that okay this is what i want to do and i put my work efficiently i do my work efficiently at least i apply properly then we will surely get opportunities so thanks a lot jyoti for your time and uh, we wish you all the very best for your you know research work academic work and again i'll you know pop up and interact with you once you complete your phd and you become dr jyoti sharon <laughs> okay thank you thank you, you.